On the John Phillips Show, Talk Radio 790 KABC, victims' rights advocate Deborah Tate joins us at the top of the hour. She's going to weigh in on this ding-dong that we have as district attorney, George Gascon, or as I affectionately refer to him, Little Ricky. And it's time to open up the state of California for business. Mr. Randy Wang has the week off. Well, the political scene in California is a mess. We have a lot of people who are a lot of, well, they have a lot of problems, let's put it that way, including a real beauty that we just elected to be district attorney of Los Angeles County. We used to have committed prosecutors in that office who tried to do things like lock criminals up and protect public safety and look out for victims. Well, now we have an inmate running the asylum. His name is George Gascon. He comes to us through San Francisco, where he was the district attorney up there and ruined that city. And now he's trying to ruin Los Angeles County. He's the prosecutor that refuses to prosecute. His platform includes ending cash bail for certain offenses, ending the death penalty, ending the practice of charging juveniles as adults. His office also has said they'll begin reevaluating all sentences in Los Angeles County of anyone who served more than 20 years in state prison because they are, quote, a low risk to reoffend. He'll also end the, end the use of sentencing enhancements, which typically add more time behind bars for people who are gang members or those who use a firearm during a crime. What could go wrong? If you're a crime victim and you are hoping that the district attorney's office will look out for you and your family, you are now going to be out of luck. Joining us to talk about this is a woman who spent her life looking out for victims and their rights. She's the author of the book, Sharon Take Tate Recollection, and you can follow her on Twitter at Debra underscore Tate 9. Deb Tate, welcome to the program. Thank you, John. I wish we were talking to each other about something better than this, but oh my God, are the people of Los Angeles in for a rude awakening? You know, it really doesn't get any worse than this. This uh, particular individual uh, is extremely reckless and a danger to society at large, in my opinion, because the criminals that he releases are not going to stay in Los Angeles County. They are going to spread throughout California and eventually the rest of the United States. So this is a problem for all of us. You know, you talk to people in security in corporate America, whether it be a, a store, a bank, what have you, and you, you ask them, who are the most proficient thieves in your store? And the answer is almost always an employee because they have access from within. They can, they can rob us blind while we think that they're on the same team as everyone else. What we have in the prosecutor's office now is we have a thief on the inside. We have a guy who is working for the other team, and he's head of the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. In many respects, this is the perfect crime, isn't it? It absolutely is. It's it's a travesty, John. I don't know what else to describe it as. We really have to work as hard as we can at informing the public at large what kind of an individual he is, what the consequences of an uh, election uh, into the office of district attorney has as consequences. Most voters that I speak to don't even realize that this is the most powerful individual in any county. I'm getting asked all the time, well, who do I vote? for what should i do um they really have no idea when you speak to other victims of crime and victims rights advocates what are they telling you right now about george gascon well it's nothing nice uh basically at this point they're all pleading with me to to lead some kind of a charge or fix this in some way uh nobody has anything nice they are he's re-victimizing victims he is the biggest threat to public safety that 
anybody can imagine. He's basically organized crime on the inside. Have you seen the video? Uh, He was giving a press conference in Pomona, and there were the mothers of murder victims who were there who were wanting to speak with him. He wouldn't speak with them. So they were telling him about their, their children who were murdered. And he went after them verbally and said that they were uneducated and let them have it. What does that say to you about his respect for victims and their rights? He has no respect whatsoever for victims or their rights. He is basically, in my opinion, a megalomaniac. He has an agenda. His main, the the voice that he's listening to the most is Kim Kardashian, who in the very beginning, I, uh, at the Rolling Stone Variety uh, Symposium on Criminal Justice, I was in the front row. You cannot paint a broad stroke. Black Lives Matter cannot paint a broad stroke. Everything needs to be judged on its own merits or dismerits. You can't do this without endangering lives. And I I mean, if you want to talk about uneducated, in my opinion, he's extremely uneducated, not only to the law as it is, to the, uh, he has no empathy, no sympathy uh, towards victims, both people that have already been victimized or future victims and there will be future victims as a result of his policies now what the public needs to understand is there is a difference between law and policies so we have to band together stand up and make sure that our rights and the law are upheld this man is totally coloring outside the line George Gascon on reality. <laughs> <laughs> well, he may be Pinocchio, but the Geppetto in this story is George Soros, who is the sugar daddy who funded George Gascon's campaign. And he didn't just do it in Los Angeles, but he also ran other candidates very similar to George Gascon in San Diego, in Sacramento, in Alameda, San Francisco, other counties. He's trying to do this up and down the state. And I talked to District Attorney Steve Cooley last week, former District Attorney, who said yeah. that if you're in Orange County or you're in Riverside County or Ventura County or Imperial or or other Southern California counties, guess what? It's coming your way. George Soros wants to remake this state. There are a lot of billionaires out there who do not believe what George Soros believes. Is it time for someone to pony up the money to be the counterbalance to George Soros so that our team has the money that they need to launch a vigorous campaign against these candidates who have these radical beliefs that are funded by George Soros? Good God, I hope so. I would think that there would be a a line of people that were willing to band together to keep this from happening. We have to launch a counter campaign, and yes, that does require funds. Um, But people are going to pay with their lives. And the initial victims that died, that's one wave of, of being victimized. But the real harm is done in the remaining families that are left to suffer that loss forever. And I would like to think that there's a lot of good people out there that have very deep pockets that would uh, that would like to come over to our side. At least I hope so. And from everything that I read on Mr. Soros, by the way, he became a billionaire. He made most of his money on the back of tragedy. So what is his end game? I have to ask what exactly is he planning for these cities that he leaves basically in a pile of ashes? Well, he's a 90-something-year-old billionaire. He has private security. He lives behind a gate. 
he doesn't have to worry about being the victim of a crime. But if you're a single mom or you're an elderly person or you're a child walking to school and you've got child molesters and you've got muggers and you've got murderers out there, you rely on the district attorney's office. You rely on law and order. You rely on the police to keep you safe. He doesn't have to worry about it. But the people whose lives he's impacting, they do. Exactly. Exactly, John. And those people will come in a multitude of colors. So I, I, my mind is blown. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. The propensity the, uh, for becoming a victim, it can be a drive-by shooting, it generally will happen in the uh, uh, poorer neighborhoods. But this is going to spread like a cancer to where people in Beverly Hills can be victimized. Uh, nobody lives in a, gas, a glass castle. When you speak to deputy DAs, people who spend their careers trying to keep bad guys locked up, what do they tell you about their new boss? This has to be heartbreaking for them. This is heartbreaking. I've heard them speak of fear. I know personally several that have taken early retirement. Their minds are blown. They cannot believe that they are uh, being asked to endorse the release of dangerous criminals. He's actually asking them to endorse the criminals as opposed to uh, well, he abolished the the Lifer unit. Uh, we we uh, such as the Manson family. I've got a hearing January twenty twenty uh, second on Bruce Davis, who's the meanest and nastiest of them all, outside of even in my opinion above Charlie. Um, we will have no more legal representation there whatsoever. Do you believe there's an there's a chance that the district attorney's office could go into that hearing and say, yes, we advocate for the release of the Manson family? Uh, that is exactly what Mr. Gascon is is asking of his district attorneys. Now, nobody will be going in. That's been forbidden. There will be no more representation from a legal entity in a parole hearing, but he's actually asked for letters of support for the release of the inmate to be written to the California Parole Board. Based on your understanding of Gascon's position, if Charlie Manson were still alive, do you think Gascon would advocate for his release? Absolutely. This is an example of the broad stroke of the paintbrush that I was referring to earlier. There has to be, you can't say, you can't have a blanket policy. Everything needs to be judged on its own merit or lack and behind that to my dying breath. And so should everybody else. This is a problem for each and every one of us. We will be living in fear until we take care of this problem. And Mr. Gascon is agenda. Now, whores can be found in all kinds of flavors. But if you truly experience the loss of a loved one, you are not going to get on board with this. This guy needs to be run out of town on a rail. And I know he was just elected, and I know we're talking about a recall of a governor, so we got a lot going on right now politically in that arena. But if this guy is allowed to serve four years as district attorney, the permanent damage that he can inflict on the people of Los Angeles is immeasurable. I really do believe this guy not only has to be recalled, but victims need to confront him Every time he gives a press conference, every time he gives a speech, every time he goes out there and he advocates for these sorts of things, the other side has to be presented. And the people of Los Angeles need to know the damage that this guy is doing to our county. I am all about protecting the innocent. 
He is all about protecting the guilty. And I think, John, you're right. That's exactly what needs to be happening. Not only the families of victims, but the the people at large, people that have not yet uh, had this horrific experience. I'm I do not want one more person to have to experience the pain that my family went through. My mother is known as the mother of victims' rights. We wrote all of the rights that Mr. Gaston is now taking away. I saw the handwriting on the wall before he ever took office. I said to my DA, oh boy, I see our victims' rights slipping away. People, these are rights that are very important. Let me tell you, you have, I hope most of you don't know and never have to know how important they are. But if there was ever a fight worth fighting, this is it. If your mom were around today, what advice would she give? She'd be pushing me out front. (laughs) 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 She'd say, you're you're our warrior, Deborah, because right now she would be... (laughs) too feeble but she was definitely <laughs> pushing me out front and saying go daughter warrior go <laughs> <laughs> oh boy deborah tate victims rights advocate you can get her online at what is it no parole for manson family.org absolutely.com dot com I think the other one might be a Cambodian porn site, so don't go there. No parole for MansonFamily.com. Thank you very much, John. Thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure.